This video was brought to you by my loyal patrons. Pledge today and you can participate in choosing what video comes to the channel next. Link in the description. Every railway has its heroes. The railways on the island of Sodor have many. Some heroes are defined by their strength. Some are defined by their courage. Some are defined by their refusal to give up. And some are defined by their undoubted loyalty. Yes, Sodor has many heroes. But what is a hero without a villain? Diesel is, well, a diesel. A diesel shunter. Proudly the first diesel to run on Sodor rails. Once brought to Sodor to be trialed in the big yard, Diesel caused trouble and was sent away. And then brought back and sent away again. And then brought back and sent away again. And then brought back. And as of now, he's a Sodor resident. Diesel gives Diesels a bad name. He is rather proud of what he is and sees himself above the clapped out steam engines. He believes he is revolutionary, and when others don't agree with him or he believes that they have wronged him in some way, he pulls strings in the shadows, manipulates others, and schemes to pay them out. He's truly earned his nickname, Devious Diesel. Diesel is our first outright baddie to be covered in Sodor's Finest. And I think he is the perfect contender, considering it is the spooky month. We covered Cranky last time, but he's not really an antagonist. More of a misunderstood curmudgeon type. Diesel, however, is a straight-up villain. And I think that alone is going to give us a lot of good material to dive into, as villains are always the most fun to dissect. So without further ado, let's dive in and see just what makes this Diesel so... Well, devious. Usually the Railway series is the chunkiest section in these videos, as there's so much lore and background to the characters to discuss. Well, not so much with Diesel. Diesel appears in a grand total of one main series book and one additional companion book. He also makes a brief appearance in this book, if you count this. So overall, not that major of a character. Interestingly, Diesel was not totally created by Wilbert Audrey himself, but instead by Eric Marriott, the editor of the Railway series at the time. He suggested that Wilbert introduced a Diesel character in order to keep the series up to date. And so, Wilbert ran with that. He decided to write a book that introduced diesel engines into the series in a meaningful way. The result was Book 13, Duck and the Diesel Engine, published in 1958. This book is mostly about Duck, but Diesel is a major player in it. The book opens with the real-life Great Western engine City of Truro visiting Sodor on a rail tour, and he mingles with Duck, talking all things Great Western with him. May I talk to you? He asked shyly. Of course, smiled the famous engine. I see you are one of us. This encounter gives Duck a big head and he becomes rather insufferable. Even Edward is depicted as being fed up with him. In the second story, Pop Goes the Diesel, the Fat Controller decides to trial a diesel shunter in the big yard. The first diesel to ride Sodor's rails. The diesel, painted in plain black and with no visible number, or even a name, seems polite at first, but later reveals that he is quite sinister. When he and Duck are alone, the Diesel reveals his true nature. You're worthy, Sir Topham Hat. Thinks I need to learn. He is mistaken. We Diesels don't need to learn. We know everything. We are a revolutionary. Duck, being rather big-headed, decides that the Diesel needs to be put in his place so he plays a trick on him which ridicules him in front of everyone. The trucks even start to sing a song about him. 
trucks are waiting in the yard, tackling them with easel. Show the world what I can do, gaily boast the diesel. In and out he creeps about like a big black weasel. When he pulls the wrong trucks out, pop goes the diesel. Before I discuss the next story, let's talk about what diesel is. Diesel is a British Railways Class 08 shunter, of which hundreds were built and scattered around England. These diesels were a common sight in train yards across the country at this point in time. The most common of common. He is a one in a million of a nameless clone army, a rather utilitarian peasant in the train world. I believe this decision to make the series' first Diesel character, one of these instead of one that is more unique or impressive in its design, was deliberate, and Audrey was trying to make a statement here. This choice in design makes Diesel a sort of representation of the future of railways at this point in time. Very utilitarian, without soul, hence why he doesn't have a number, or a fun livery, or even a name. He's just Diesel. Plain, unlined, unremarkable, Diesel. Compare that with Duck, who is a Great Western Railway 5700 class pannier tank, a class of which also hundreds were built and common across the country. He is essentially another one in a million. Audrey could have chose really any character to vessel this Diesel plot with. Percy, or James, or Thomas, but no, he chose Duck. I think he was trying to thematically show that Duck and Diesel are not really that different in the grand scheme of things. And even when you boil their characters down, they're still not. Diesel is arrogant, insufferable, full of himself, and prideful of what he is. We Diesels don't need to learn. We know everything. In this book, following his encounter with City of Truro, Duck is also arrogant, insufferable, full of himself, and prideful of what he is. There are two ways of doing things, Duck told them. The Great Western way, or the wrong way. I'm Great Western and don't we know it, they groaned. Interesting. I like to think this parallel was Audrey's way of showing that diesels and steam engines are really no better than the other. They're both flawed and equal. But the general distaste the engines have of diesels in the books is all a result of Diesel himself making a bad first impression. Cue the next story. In Dirty Work, Diesel pays Duck out for his prank, but he does so in a way that isn't a practical joke or public embarrassment. No, he gets everyone to turn on him. Diesel's a very scheming, devious character who pulls the strings in the shadows, plays the long game to get what he wants. He spreads rumors to the trucks about the big engines and lies that Duck told them. The trucks, of course, can't keep secrets and laugh at the engines. When they find out why, they all turn on Duck and cause such a ruckus that the fat controller is forced to send Duck away. What was so remarkable about this story is that the villain won. That never happens. In pretty much every story of the Railway series, the antagonist learns their lesson by the end after some sort of ridicule, and our protagonist is triumphant. Not this time. The antagonist won, and as a result, this is one of the rare stories with a pretty sad ending. Duck and Diesel are really no different. Instead of being mature, both characters turn to their own forms of sabotage to pay the other out. Duck and Diesel are both kind of unlikable in this book. The big difference between the two though is that Duck comes through at the end, and proves himself a hero in the final story when he, somewhat unsuccessfully, stops a runaway train. We learn from his final discussion with the Fat Controller that Diesel was found out and sent away off screen. I never believed Diesel. After you went, he told lies about Henry, so I sent him packing. Some may say this is a rather anticlimactic end to Diesel's story, but I think it's pretty fitting. Remember, Diesel by design is meant to be unremarkable, a nameless, one in a million clone of sorts. It's only fitting that he gets a rather unremarkable end. And that was about it for Diesel. For the remainder of the main series, Diesel never appears again. He came and went. His impact on the railway was long lasting, however, as he is mentioned a few times. I know all about Diesels. One crept into our yard and ordered us about. I soon sent him packing. 
His scheming ways definitely gave the steam engines a bad first impression of diesels in general, and made all of them rather unwelcoming to the others that arrive in later books. Duck was not pleased to see a diesel, but presently when he found that Boko knew Edward, he became more friendly. Luckily, not all diesels are like him, and the engines eventually learned to accept them. For nearly 30 years, Diesel's fate was unknown. Then, Christopher Audrey wrote a companion book to the Railway series in 1987 called Thomas and the Evil Diesel, the story in which Diesel makes his grand return to Sodor and has a redemption arc. In this book, Percy falls ill, so the Fat Controller sends for an engine from the mainland to fill in for him. He is rather unhappy to see the engine delivered was Diesel himself. The first engine to witness Diesel on the island is, appropriately, Duck, and naturally, he is anxious to see him and hides from him behind the shed wall. However, this is the only sort of follow-up to the Duck and Diesel storyline that we get. I find it strange that the big follow-up to Duck and Diesel's story is a story that does not feature Duck prominently at all. It's more of a Thomas story, which is odd to me since Thomas never met Diesel before this. It's not a great follow-up in my opinion. But it is neat to see Diesel interacting with characters that he didn't previously, like Thomas and Toby. Diesel works on Thomas's branch line in Percy's place, and being consistent with continuity, he still can't handle himself around trucks. He causes some to derail out of anger, and is given a lashing for it. But later, Thomas slips on oily tracks and derails on a runaway siding. Diesel, heading home, comes across the distressed Thomas. He has a rare moment of humanity, and helps him back to safety. He had a little redemption arc. That's kind of nice. I'm happy he got one, but in my opinion, it feels rather half-baked. His turn of character feels a little out of nowhere, and I think it would have meant more if it was Duck that he helped, showing that he had grown a bit and finally put the grudge he had with the main steam engine he conflicted with to rest. But nonetheless, we got some closure for him. In Thomas and the Great Railway Show, an unnamed Diesel is seen shunting Thomas onto a low loader during a trip of his to the mainland. I believe this was only recently confirmed to be Diesel. I'm not totally sure by who, it might have been by illustrator Clive Spong himself. So technically, this is Diesel's final canonical appearance in the Railway series. It's kind of neat that in his final appearance, he's seen helping Thomas again, showing that change of character stuck. At least, that's how I choose to interpret it. It's clear that Diesel was never intended to go far in the books. Wilbur introduced him purely as a one-off, a character to debut the whole Steam vs. Diesel conflict, and do so in a meaningful way. And I gotta say, I think Wilbur was brilliant with his portrayal of Diesel. He doesn't really represent Diesels as a whole, but more the idea of what Diesels are as a whole, from a steam engine's perspective. Factory produced utilitarian machines, slowly making their trudge to change the railway scene forever. His character parallel with Duck is quite nuanced, subtly showing that they really are not that different from each other. Diesel's time on Sodor was brief, but clearly he left his mark in this world, so it's no wonder that he made such an impact when brought to the screen. Diesel made his big debut in Season 2 in the episode Pop Goes the Diesel. This three-part story arc is virtually the same as it is in the books. The Fat Controller decides to trial a Diesel in the yard and has Duck shown around. Diesel feigns a fake nice guy personality at first. Is that James and Henry and Gordon too? I am delighted to meet such famous engines. But lets some of his true colors show when he brags to Duck that he is the future. We Diesels don't need to learn. We know everything. We are revolutionary. Duck decides to ridicule Diesel for being arrogant and Diesel gets his own back by spreading lies and getting the big engines to turn on Duck. Duck is sent away, however Diesel is found out by the Fat Controller and sent packing. And that's about it for him in Season 2, aside from a couple minor cameos. He makes his grand return in Season 3's Diesel Does It Again. Interestingly, the show opted not to adapt the book that features Diesel's big return, which strikes me as a little odd as most of these companion books were written to coincide with the show and be adapted into episodes. I wonder if that was the idea originally. 
Regardless, they opted for a different story to feature Diesel's grand return. Duck and Percy are working at the docks for a time, but with the heavy workload, it's clear another engine is needed to help them. The Fat Controller brings Diesel back, claiming he was the only engine available. Diesel arrives, and Duck gets a moment of shock when he first witnesses him. What are you doing here? gasped Duck. In some ways, I think this episode is a better follow-up to the Duck and Diesel story arc than the book in my opinion, as we actually get some falling action with Duck. Duck refuses to work with Diesel, so he goes on strike, and Percy, being a good friend to him, stands with him. What's all this? demanded the Fat Controller. Uh, we're on strike, sir. Yes, beg pardon, sir, but we won't work with Diesel, sir. Then, in a quiet, hurt voice, he added, You said you'd sent him packing, sir. Not much really comes from this, though. Sticking with continuity, Diesel still can't handle trucks and, well, causes some issues. We do start to see a turn here in his character. Diesel is still very prideful and believes he is the future, but that cunning, more scheming side to him isn't really all that present. He's actually depicted as kind of a klutz, being careless, or a bully, just because. He went bump straight into Percy. Wake up there, Percy. I once stated that this dumb bully side of Diesel really started to take shape in season 6, but after watching these episodes again, I guess that's not really true. It kind of got its roots here. Finally, the Fat Controller has had enough, and he sends Diesel packing again. Things work much better here before you arrived. I shall not be inviting you back. And then he's invited back at some point off screen in the same season. The continuity is a little shaky in season three. I guess it's possible that all of Diesel's appearances could have been a part of the same trip, but clearly Mavis takes place in winter, so I don't know. I guess they didn't really care. In this episode, Diesel gives Mavis bad advice about taking charge with the trucks and claims this. Depend upon it, Mavis. Anything steam engines can do, we Diesels can do better. In the original story, it was Daisy that gave Mavis this advice. But I think Diesel actually kind of works better. At this point in time, Daisy was a redeemed character that had gained respect for Toby and steam engines. It makes more sense to me, at least, for Diesel, the one with a vengeance, to say this. It works both ways, I guess, but it's just a matter of personal preference. I like this line too. Diesel knew nothing about trucks, but Mavis didn't realize this. That's also consistent with his appearances thus far. It's ironic. He's a type of engine built specifically to shunt trucks, and in pretty much every episode he's been in so far, he's shown that he can't handle them. After season three, Diesel disappeared for a while, presumably sent away for good. He returns again in Season 6 to fill in for Henry, in which he tries to prove diesels are better than steam engines by pulling a long line of trucks. Uh-huh. Not one of his best appearances in my opinion, but has a pretty fun crash. Help! Then he is sent away again. Diesel was sent home in disgrace. Okay, this time has to be the last time. He's been sent away like three times at this point. Yeah, goddammit. Diesel returns again in season seven. This time he's working at the Cement Works. I'll give them this though. This particular episode is a pretty good Diesel appearance. Diesel gets annoyed with Fergus for being so commanding and decides he needs to go. His scheming side comes forward and he plots to get Fergus sent away. He manipulates the poor guy into thinking he's unwanted. I'm so happy to see this side of Diesel come to light again. He's at his best when he plays the long game and plots against others, showing he's a little more than just the baddie, you know? Interestingly, he isn't sent away at the end of this one when he's found out. I shall send Diesel to the smelters and you can go back to the cement works tomorrow. They've done this same trope like three times now. The writers probably knew they could not do it again. So as far as I'm concerned, from this point on, Diesel is now a Sodor resident. Season 8 saw the start of the hit entertainment era, where Diesel became a series regular. He had two pretty good appearances this season. In Thomas to the Rescue, which is his first direct interaction with Thomas, by the way. Oh, it's you, Oil Diesel. What are you doing here? He lies and says Topham is considering scrapping steam engines. No wonder the fat controller is thinking of scrapping steamies. I don't believe you. 
which gives Thomas this horrific vision. What if Diesel is right? What if the Fat Controller scraps all of us? Pretty dark, yeesh. Later in the season, he does the same to Gordon. You steamies are old and clapped out. When the Fat Controller realizes this, you'll all be scrapped. Scrapped? Pa, I'm as fast as I ever was. I like how Diesel is portrayed here as not just a bully or a schemer this season. He's more of a grim reminder of what the future may hold. Interesting way to use his character, I think. Unfortunately, that's not really the case for the rest of the series. For pretty much the rest of the model era, Diesel is basically just the bully character and is mostly tied to Thomas. He tries to spook him on Halloween in Season 9's Flower Power. Boo! He tries to convince him he'll get lost in the fog in Bold and Brave. In Season 12's Don't Go Back, he and Thomas race each other backwards for some reason. And in Thomas and the Stinky Cheese, amazing title, he bullies him about, well, being a steam engine. The problem with working with steamies is that they are much too stinky. I personally never liked the Thomas Diesel rivalry. It always felt like it came out of nowhere and there really isn't any substance to it. It comes off like a corporate mandate. Well, we have to have an episode every season where the main character and the main baddie do something. I don't know, it just feels rather manufactured in my opinion. There is, however, an exception. Season 10's Emily and the Special Coaches. In this one, Gordon finally breaks a speed record he was trying to conquer in a previous episode. Nice continuity there. And as a reward, the Fat Controller is presenting him with a rake of his own coaches painted in his own colors. Emily is to collect the coaches, but runs into Diesel first. Once Diesel hears that Gordon is getting a reward for this, he tries to tell Emily his own news, only to be ignored by her. To pay her back, he takes the coaches before she can get to them, sending Emily on a wild goose chase across Sodor to get them back. It's a fun little montage sequence. All the racing around causes Diesel's engine to wear out, and after Emily finally catches up with him, she questions what's going on with him. Diesel tells her, Because Gordon's not the only one who's set a record, I've set one too. I've shunted more trucks in one day than any other Diesel. This is the first time we really see Diesel in a position of sympathy that delves a bit into why he's such a vengeful asshole all the time. He's just a Diesel, not one of the star steam engines, so no one pays attention to him, despite his strides. Emily, naturally, feels quite guilty, and alerts the fat controller of Diesel's struggle. And during Gordon's ceremony, Diesel is presented with a new engine as his reward. This has got to be, like, the only time thus far we've had an episode where Diesel has a happy ending. There was definitely a de-evolution with Diesel in the model era. He started out as a scheming, manipulative villain, and while that side of him never fully went away, they did tend to stick to the more careless, bully side of him as time went on. The least interesting side of him, in my opinion. Emily and the Special Coaches was a nice change-up in Diesel's portrayal, seeing a more sympathetic side of him, his side of the story that we never really get focus on. And as we will see, the CGI series would take this portrayal and really run with it. The CGI era loved Diesel. Barring the first season, season 13, Diesel is a pretty major character in every season, sometimes having more time in the spotlight than the main characters themselves. In Diesel's first major CGI appearance, which was the movie Misty Island Rescue, this little exchange happens. I'm a really useful engine too. I'm sure Sir Topham Hat means a really useful steamy. You'll never be that. In season 14's Diesel's special delivery, this little exchange happens. I am never clapped and cheered. That's because you are a diesel. In the movie Day of the Diesels, the steam engines have this to say about diesel engines. And it's full of diesels. Diesels can be devious. I'm beginning to see a pattern here. I would not say that any of these stories are well written. 
and I'm not even sure how intentional this was on the writer's part, but it seemed they were going for a sort of kid-friendly allegory of racism with the Diesels in the early Nitrogen era, Diesel being their main catalyst. Perhaps I'm reading too much into this, but I gotta say, I find it interesting that before, Diesels were the snooty ones and put down the steam engines. But at this point in time, it seems the tables have turned. Steam engines have been the kings of Sodor for so long that they are now the ones putting down the Diesels. It's a turn of the tides, kind of showing that even the most loved ones in power do eventually turn corrupt, and those who were once ostracized eventually become sympathetic. Am I reading too far into this, or are these just badly written stories of a kid show about talking trains? You tell me. <laughs> Diesel is portrayed as a sympathetic villain so many times in the CGI series. They loved playing this angle. In Diesel's special delivery, he acts out of turn because he just wants the same attention that James is getting. In Wild Water Rescue, he plays a trick on Percy, but then he feels guilty about it and goes out of his way to save him. I may not be a rescue vehicle, but I can rescue you! Only to get stuck himself. In the show's A Christmas Carol adaptation, Diesel's Ghostly Christmas, they use Diesel in place of the Scrooge character, and he has a change of heart by the episode's end. Diesel and the Ducklings shows a side of Diesel that's very vulnerable. He has a soft spot for cute ducklings, and Thomas blackmails him into being nice to everyone, or else he'll spill his secret. Quack, quack, quack? No. Thomas, please. Nah, I, I, I... Season 21's Springtime for Diesel is the big one, the one that really seemed like Diesel was going to change after the events of it. In this one, Diesel bumps Daisy just because, and causes her to break a spring. He goes through the stages of guilt, until finally apologizing and owning up to his mistake on his own terms. But so what if I did give you a little bump? Other engines aren't nice to me, so why should I be nice to other engines? Can they blame me for everything? He reveals he acts the way he does, because he believes he is mistreated by the others. Ostracized, because everyone views him as a troublemaker. When really, he acts out because all he wants is a friend. And by the episode's end, does he really start making a change to achieve that? I love that Daisy doesn't let him off the hook for it. I don't like being bumped. No one does. If you want to make friends, Diesel, you need to change your ways. It's a good way of saying to the audience, okay, we understand why you are the way you are, but that still doesn't give you the right to act like a dick. Life's not that easy. I love that the episode ends on a hopeful note that Diesel is a changed engine, letting the viewer imagine where his story goes next. Maybe Diesel can make some more friends, if he really can learn to change his ways. It's a crying shame that they didn't stick to this character development, because I think it's one of this era's strongest stories, successfully turning a repugnant character that we've disliked for so long and to someone that we want to see have a redemption. Obviously, this was done to keep the series at a status quo, but maybe you can view this as a commentary on how some people just aren't capable of change, no matter how hard they want it, forever doomed to be stuck in their ways. Makes Diesel almost a kind of tragic character, in a way. You can tell that at some point in the show, particularly around the Brenner era, that Diesel was just a fun character for them to write for. You see this with characters like Cranky too. Sympathetic villains are always fun, because you can have them being nasty and rude, and also dive into why they're that way. I can understand why a writer would find a character like Diesel more fun to write for than, say, Edward or Percy. This is all not to say that Diesel is never portrayed as just a villain, however. We get a lot of irredeemable Diesel too. Percy and the Calliope and No More Mr. Nice Engine are both examples of Diesel just being an asshole for the hell of it. Day of the Diesels, Blue Mountain Mystery, A Most Singular Engine, and Sunny's Second Chance are all good examples of Diesel's scheming, cunning side coming out, manipulating others to his own advantage. Your best friend doesn't have time for you anymore, Percy. Do you think she's more useful than you with your crane? Because that's what she's been saying. You are right to tell me, Paxton. We don't want an engine like that on our island. He could knock one of us into the sea next. It could be you. <gasps> oh, my! 
I think this is a good time to bring up Paxton, a character who was rather tied to Diesel in the CGI era. Paxton was originally just a background character, a random Diesel of many in the background causing havoc. 2012's Blue Mountain Mystery decided that it was time to flesh Paxton out and turn him into a character of his very own. And what they invented here was a foil to Diesel. Paxton is very good-natured, and he sees the best in everyone. A good contrast to Diesel, who is cynical and mischievous. But at the same time, Paxton is also very gullible and naive and easily susceptible to manipulation, something Diesel takes great joy in doing. The two have absolutely nothing in common, but it's obvious why they stick around with each other. Paxton doesn't know better and sees the good in Diesel, and Diesel enjoys playing to Paxton's naivete for his own advantage. Season 18's Disappearing Diesels is the best example of this dynamic. In this one, Diesel tells all the others to hide from Paxton just because, and send Paxton in a panic that all the Diesels have somehow disappeared. Something terrible must have happened. <laughs> Diesel has so much fun running away from Paxton that he runs out of fuel. Paxton is just so relieved that Diesel is okay that he isn't even stunned when Diesel tells him that it was all a prank. We weren't missing. We were hiding from you. Oh, well, that's not a very good hiding place, Diesel. I can see you. <laughs> and just because he's such a good guy, Paxton helps Diesel get more fuel. This act of kindness is so kind that it just totally stuns Diesel to a point where he doesn't even know how to act. Diesel didn't know what to make of this. He hadn't been very kind to Paxton, but Paxton was being very kind to him. Why did you help me? That's what friends are for. I think Paxton is a perfect foil for him. And I love that they decided that Diesel's foil should also be a class 08. They are so similar in appearance, showing that not all members of this clone army act the same way. It reinforces that Diesel, being the way he is, is totally of his own doing. Something I only noticed on this latest rewatch is that this dynamic has a sort of natural shift as the show goes on. After being ignored and insulted and used by Diesel for so long, Paxton starts to grow wise to him. In Springtime for Diesel, he gets angry with Diesel for bumping him. And in Season 23's Diesel Glows Away, he says this to him. You give Diesel's a bad name! As time goes on, it seems even the naive sees the best in everyone Paxton starts to understand that Diesel is a lost cause. Audrey originally used Duck, a steam engine, to illustrate a parallel between each side of the steam and diesel conflict. And the CGI era used Paxton, a diesel, to illustrate the differences of those on the same side. Diesel had range in the CGI series. I don't love every appearance he's had here, of course, but in CGI, Diesel could be used for so many things. Sometimes he could represent just a villain, manipulative and scheming. He could also be a sympathetic villain, someone we don't agree with, but on some level, understand, with weaknesses and desires. Fodder ripe for a writer to break down. Sometimes he could be used as a foil to Paxton to extract humor. And sometimes he can be used as a victim in the show's child-friendly allegory of racism. He's a pretty complicated character, honestly, with a lot going on. And they really did use him to the fullest in this era, for better or for worse. It's funny how our tastes change over time, how we reconsider things we thought were bad at one point. Going into this video, I was pretty sure I was going to say the Railway series was the best portrayal of Diesel. But, after watching the episodes again, I think I'm actually going to give this one to the CGI series. I used to not like Diesel in CGI. I thought he was too much of a cartoony bad guy. But after watching all of his episodes again, I feel a sort of sympathy for him. You can tell the writers just had a lot of fun writing for him and I think the ways they used him are far more interesting than the other eras. I really do love what Audrey did with Diesel and what he was thematically trying to show with him, but his character there was never really intended to go that far. He was a symbol of the future and a parallel to Duck, 
and not really much else. By the time we got to CGI though, Diesel had become a full-fledged character, and a pretty interesting one at that. He definitely left his mark on Sodor, and in that regard, is one of the railway's most notable. He's full of surprises, just like he always be. He brings some razzle-dazzle to the rail. He's full of surprises, as you can plainly see. He's trusting his surprises to prevail. He knows his time being surprising doesn't fail. They used to call him devious, because he had a bit of grievous. But please, you must believe us. He's not that bad. Well, maybe just a tad. <laughs> and thus concludes another installment of Sodor's Finest. Diesel's a character that I've looked forward to covering, since each era seemed to have their own take on him. Perfect timing, too. The patrons all voted for a Sodor's Finest in October, just in time for Halloween. I have a couple things to shout out here. First of all, I have an Instagram now. It's mostly just a place for me to dump photos of the progress on my model railway and train room, as well as other stuff that might appeal to you all. I'm trying to use that more now, so if you have an Instagram, head on over and give the unlucky tug underscore official a follow. Second thing is, the lucky tug is back! My original alt channel where I'd upload edits and other content that I didn't think was suited for the main channel. I will continue to post random edits and videos here. Right now I have a big remastered tugs footage compilation up, so head on over and check that out if you're interested. I have some other Tugs content in the works right now that I will be uploading there when I get around to finishing them, so look out for those. And the last thing that I'd like to talk with you all about today is an unlikely fandom. An upcoming documentary directed by Brandon Carty all about the Thomas fandom. This feature length film has been in production for several years now, but it's finally finished. I will be totally honest here. I didn't really know what to expect with this thing, but Brandon has graciously let me watch it early and I have to say, it's very well made and provides a lot of interesting perspectives on Thomas as a show and on the fandom from people not involved in the fan stuff. There's a lot of great interviews in this and a few surprises too. I have a surprise of my own to share with you. Brandon has allowed me to show a brand new teaser of the film, so... Buckle up. Weird people, they do something no one else is doing, and they take a risk, they go against the grain, and that's how some beautiful things happen. Thomas is an escape. It's an emotional outlet. It invites you to be creative. Not just for yourself, but also to share that creativity with other people. And make a community out of it. Well, I'm saying to the fans, stay unlikely. An unlikely fandom will be premiering at the Museum of the Moving Image in Queens, New York on November 27th. If you're planning on going to the annual Edison train show the weekend before, consider hopping over the Hudson River to come see the premiere. Tickets are close to sold out, so head over to the link in the description to book yours now. That's all from me, folks. Have a fantastic day! And I will see you all in the next one.